Looking for that orange colored fish to spice up your aquarium? You're in luck. Keep watching as I continue my series covering my favorite nano fish of every color of the rainbow. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish here with practical tips on nano fish and planted aquariums. And if you missed my previous video on my top five red nano fish, you can check out the video over here. But I really like orange because it's similar to red where the fish really pop out in front of a green lush planted tank. Number one on the list is balloon mollies. I, they are the first libera I ever kept because I love their derpy shape, their energetic personality, how they're always coming up to the glass and begging for food. I also like them because they stay much smaller than regular mollies, so you can keep them in a smaller tank. In my experience, they've only gotten to about two to two and a half inches in my aquarium, and they come in many, many different colors, black, white, Dalmatian, but I'm more interested in the orange and calico ones. Calico meaning orange with some black and white speckling on them. They can live in your typical tropical tank temperatures, but they do like a slightly higher pH and especially higher mineral content. The last batch of balloon mollies I got actually were raised in brackish water. So I ended up having to dump a ton of sea chem equilibrium into my very soft water so that they could survive. Thankfully though, they're very easy to breed. So I was able to pull out their fry and raise them in my normal freshwater tap water. Because they're always hungry, they make for great cleanup crew members. I love how they not only scavenge on the bottom for leftover food, but also eat algae. That flat mouth of theirs is perfect for pulling off tufts of hair algae and even blackbeard algae if they're hungry enough. If you don't like balloon shaped fish, I totally understand. Try out the painted platies or gold wag platies instead. Number two on our list is Ember Tetras. This is a nano schooling fish that comes from Brazil. And unlike the balloon mollies, which show more of a solid orange color, these are a translucent orange fish, but all over their entire body. They are also the smallest fish on our list, coming in at a little less than an inch long, very tiny. They're really popular in green planted aquariums. So since they like to swim in mid water, you might consider getting some taller plants or maybe some floating plants above that have long roots so they can swim among them. As with all the schooling fish on this list, you'll want a group of six or more, and they'll do great in just about any peaceful community tank with similarly sized fish. Tiny fish have very tiny mouths, so make sure to feed them tiny foods like crushed up flakes, frozen daphnia, and micro pellets. It is pretty easy to get them to lay eggs, but the adults tend to eat the eggs and the fries. So if you do plan on breeding them, make sure to provide lots of dense cover, maybe spawning mops, or some people like to use glass marbles or a mesh on the bottom so the eggs can fall through and the adults can't get to them. Next on the list is the SBI Rasbora, also more commonly known as the Lamb Chop Rasbora for the very distinct lamb chop shaped triangular black patch on a shiny, shiny orange body. So pretty. They look similar to the Harlequin Rasbora, but don't get as big. Maybe getting to up to an inch and a half at most. This is another hardy, peaceful schooling nano fish, this time coming from Southeast Asia. So you'll want to keep a group of six or more and probably 10 gallons or more as their tank size. They're not picky eaters. They'll eat anything small, like maybe brine shrimp, um, frozen cyclops, maybe freeze dried tube effects worms. These are also difficult to breed, but I've heard they have a very interesting courtship dance where the male and female at the very end, they swim upside down underneath a plant leaf and then they lay their eggs on the underside of the leaf. So if you want to raise them up, make sure to remove those adults and then feed the tiny, tiny fry things like infusoria. You may be surprised to hear about my choice for number four on this list, which is Mexican dwarf crayfish. This very, very hardy invertebrate comes in many, many different colors, but I'm specifically interested in that bright orange crayfish. They grow to about uh, two inches long, so maybe aim for 10 gallons or more for their aquarium size. Now, like most invertebrates, they're definitely gonna need a lot more minerals in their water and in their food as well, so they can do healthy molting. They use those minerals to create their exoskeleton. So if you're like me and you've got that soft water problem, you can add things like sea chem equilibrium or wonder shell. And then for foods, you can feed them calcium or mineral rich foods like Hikari uh, crab cuisine, as well as Zoomed nano banquet blocks. 
Now crayfish are notorious for being aggressive little creatures. However, the Mexican dwarf crayfish is relatively peaceful. You may see them squabble a little among each other, so make sure to provide lots of hiding spots for them. Now for tank mates, it's kind of a balance. You wanna make sure there's nothing big enough in the tank that will eat the crayfish, as well as nothing small and slow enough for the crayfish to eat, because they are hungry, hungry little critters. Finally, this is one of the first species that is easy to breed. They're kind of like cherry shrimp, where as long as you have a male and a female, they're gonna go do their thing. Females will carry the eggs underneath that tail area, and then the eggs will hatch out as little miniature adults. So if you want them to survive, again, provide a lot of cover for them, as well as tiny foods that can reach them. Number five on the list are glow light tetras. Now, despite the similarly sounding name, these are not the same as the genetically modified glowfish that come in bright pink and fluorescent green. These are actually a naturally occurring species from Guyana in South America. So where you're, you're looking at a one and a half inch long translucent silver fish that has a shocking neon orange horizontal stripe running from nose to tail. Very, very cool. I don't know why more people don't keep these fish because they look amazing in front of a you know dark substrate, maybe a black background, and of course, lots and lots of live aquarium plants. Like the ember tetras and lamb chopper boras I mentioned before, this is basically another peaceful schooling nano fish. So same thing, keep them in a group of six or more in a 10 gallon or larger aquarium. They like to swim in the mid water, so feed them lots of tiny, slowly sinking foods. Now, if you want to breed them, I've heard they're very difficult as well, kind of like neon tetras, where you have to figure out how to separate the eggs from the very hungry adults, and then the eggs are light sensitive, so you have to keep everything dark, dark, dark. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite orange nano fish is, because I'd love to add it to my bucket list of rainbow colored fish. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.